Matt, we've just turned up here at Avalanche Adventure, an off-road centre. Mm -hmm. I've turned up in an off-roader, the off-roader, a Range Rover. Mm -hmm. You look like you're on your way to hot yoga. I think it's a bit harsh. I can see you're not expecting to have to get out your car. No. But I think you would underestimate the Suzuki Jimny, because that's, that's what it is. I think you would underestimate that at your peril. You think that's a proper off-roader? Yeah, underneath that meek exterior lies the beating heart of a real 4x4. I'm not so sure, but let's find out, okay? I'm going to lead the way in my proper off-roader. Okay. And we'll see if you can follow me. All right, done. Okay, let's get this over and done with. This won't take long. I'll drive through a little bit of mud or something and he'll get stuck. Now, I'm not an off-roader. I don't know the first thing about off-road. Actually, I do know one thing about off-roading. You keep your thumbs outside the steering wheel. This is really civilized, actually. I've got lovely armchair. I've got all this leather, all this wood. It's like being in a nice country pub. I just need a fire. Actually, I've got a heated steering wheel. That's pretty close. Hot yoga, I ask you. Suzuki Jimny, on sale since 1998, which is phenomenal. Might make it the oldest car still in production. There's gonna be a new one next year, so this is kind of a last hurrah. Sorry, we're concerned with this car. And it is cool. Still looks fresh, doesn't it? It does not look, well, I mean, the interior, <laughs> the interior doesn't, but the car outside, I think, still looks fresh. I think that's probably because it was designed with a slight form follows function thing in mind, so that overhangs are really short. 34 degree approach angle, 46 degree departure angle, that's extraordinary. 31 degree breakover angle, that's also very good, isn't it? Being a Land Rover, this Range Rover has got this very clever suite of off-road technologies, they call it terrain response, so I can choose whatever I want really, grass, gravel and snow, or I can choose muddy ruts, I can choose sandy mode, rocky mode, actually all I'm going to do is leave it in auto mode, and it calculates what the terrain is like and then chooses the best mode. Perfect. I think Daniel doesn't quite realise what a Jimny is. I mean, it won't wade as far as a Land Rover or a Range Rover. £120,000 worth of Range Rover. I've got a manual gearbox, so I've got a 1.3 litre engine. I think 4x4s are a bit like sports cars, right? In that some things are great at, I don't know, say, going around a narrow racetrack, and others are great at going at really high speed in a straight line. And I think 4x4s are kind of the same, you know, they do different things. But anyway, that should do all of the things that it's supposed to do. You know why? Because its options cost more than this car does. With options, this car is £122,000. Right, so far, Pryor in his little Suzuki is keeping up. It looks pretty cute, actually, that thing in my mirrors. I don't have locking differentials, I don't think, but I do have low ratio four-wheel drive, and that sets the gearing really down low. So I don't need hill descent control, because frankly, that's just cruised down that hill in first gear, it's really low. We're going straight up this steep bit now. Bloody hell, I can't see a thing. Blind, just sky. Oh, that breakover angle is not as good as a Suzuki Jimny's. Wish you could see what I can see right now. I can see the underneath of a Range Rover. Very impressive, actually, when there's lots of expensive looking breakable bits. Okay, that was an extremely <laughs> steep ascent. And I can just see that Matt has dropped out of vision. There he is. He's just come over the top there in that little Suzuki. You go to the countryside, you see loads of these things because they just keep going. They go up steep hills. They just break over steep angles like that with no bother. This is cool. This is a great little car. And it will go today everywhere that that Range Rover does. I'm confident of that. Matt, you're keeping up so far. Um, what time is your Zumba class? Do we need to finish up here soon? Yeah, I've got to get home and get into my yoga pants as well. So if we could be away by about two-ish, that'd be great. He has no idea. He genuinely, I think he genuinely has no idea. This is my kind of off-roading. It's luxurious, it's comfortable, it's effortless. I don't really have to put any work into it. The car's doing everything for me. And this Range Rover really is a pucker, pucker off-roader. It's got all the hardware, adjustable ride height in this 4x4i function and then in off-road information, it shows me all sorts. So I can have a look at wheel information, it shows the wheel articulation, it shows steering angle, it shows which diffs are locked. 
And here in slope information, I can have a look at the incline, I can have a look at how the car's tilted over. That's really, really clever stuff. I'm pretty sure that Suzuki doesn't have any of this stuff. This isn't very challenging, mate. Go on, I think you've got to, I think you've got to ask more of that car. Don't worry, mate, that's just the first lap. We'll find some more challenging stuff. Ooh, scrabbling a bit there. That was not easy for the Range Rover. Will Matt be able to get through there? Surely not. So he's just gone up a muddy slope and I'm about to do the same. So I'm about to go down. He'd have his heel descent thing juggling the control. I've just got my feet off everything. Well, one, a turn is easier. Two, getting through the mud is easier. Three, getting up the hill is also easier. How did he do that? This car weighs 1,040 kilos. That's nothing, is it? So when he gets to the mud and he struggles through and he's fat, four grand alloys or whatever they are, they're spinning wildly as his tires struggle for traction. Matt, I'm amazed you got up that steep ascent because the Range Rover was really scrabbling up there. So I'm gonna try and find an even slipperier bit for you. Okay, mate. Yeah, go for it. He's quite happy there, annoyingly. We are reckoning you weigh about, what, 2.5, 2.6 tonnes. Yeah, don't talk. I can see you're a bit busy at the minute. Trying to prevent this 2.6 tonnes sliding gracefully. Wow. Keep, uh, mm, yeah, wheel straight. Wheel straight. Oh, he's coming back. He's not giving up, are you? Is he giving up? You're not giving up on that, are you? He's giving up on it. He's not seriously giving up. Yeah, Matt, so this is 2.6 tonnes, I reckon. Oh, that's probably a little bit heavier than yours, is it? Yeah, not by, you know, not by much. Only by, only by the weight of a Porsche Cayman. Mm, no, more than a, more than a Hurricane. It's about 1,600 kilos more than this, mate. Yeah, that's quite a lot, isn't it? So more than double. It's been impressive so far, I have to say. How are you going to deal with that muddy bit? What muddy bit? So far, that little Suzuki has kept up with everything the big Range Rover can do. It's impressive, isn't it, really? We'll try one last bit of really dirty, wet mud plugging, see if we can get that Suzuki stuck. Right, here, it is pretty muddy. Don't get stuck, Suzuki. That's not part of the plan. I don't think it's gonna get stuck, is it? It does get very gloopy over there. I'm gonna stay here while Dan tries it and fails. Incidentally, we're not going to do much wading. I think I'm stuck. I've got it stuck. I've got the Range Rover stuck. Matt, I think I'm stuck. Can you, if you were to back out of it, could you get, could you get back through the gloop you just come through? Yeah, I'll get out of the way. Are you going to have a go at it? Come on. Come on, don't ground, don't ground, don't ground. What do you reckon, mate? One more go at that? Yeah, I think if I stick it in second and have a wee run up, I might stand a chance. So on his first attempt, he got just as stuck as I did, which is gratifying. He's gonna have another go. It's like stretching a muscle. You know, the first time, you know, it's a bit stiff. Second time. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. He's over. <laughs> wow, there you are, you got over it. I'm unexpectedly thrilled about that. That's awesome. I love this car. I love this car. You'd really like this car, I think. I hope. It's just great. And how exciting that they're going to make a new one that I think should retain the sort of character and the ruggedness and the go anywhere appeal of this one. Are you going to have another crack? Yeah, mate. I think given that you had two attempts, I'm going to have one more shot at it, see if I can get this thing over. Yeah, I think that's entirely fair, mate. OK, a bit more speed, a bit more momentum. God. It's beached. It's stuck. That little thing is very impressive. It's remarkable, isn't it? You know, I mean, they're both really impressive, aren't they? But I think ultimately this will probably go that little bit that little bit further than, than, than that will. Yeah. But maybe that isn't the surprise because you've got, a, you've got a, a luxury car. I know this is the big expensive car with all the clever technology, all the fancy bits, but it does have one massive disadvantage today. Which is? Me. Me. I'm, I'm not an off-road driver. I don't really, I'm pretty incompetent off-road. 
you know, for somebody with very little or even no experience can just come around and drive, just steer it and put the throttle down and it will get you most places. Mm. And ultimately it probably would get up there if it wasn't somebody else's 120 grand car and we weren't, we weren't worried about them. It's not even on super knobbly tyres, they're pretty road biased tyres. Yeah, fairly. That's what surprised me is that it will go through even the really gloopy stuff on these on these tyres. I expected it to be decent on grades and stuff, but it's really... And what a, what a nice way to say goodbye to a... To, a really cool, perhaps a little bit underrated car actually. Proper little thing that is, yeah. you have to say, proper little off-roader. <laughs>